It is not uncommon to build a functional prototype of the system you're trying to design in order to test prove the technology, the concepts, and validate all of it with your customers to make sure that you're moving in the right direction. In this video, I would like to show you a small prototype of the elevator simulation system since we begin working on our first assignment in this project. So let's first open the handout. And as we look at this application, we'll have a chance to discuss the actors and the use cases. And uh, let me first show you my prototype so you can see what I had in mind uh, demonstrating a few of these uh, business requirements in, our, in the actual working software. So here I have these uh, building configuration and scenario configuration parameters. Uh, uh, the minimum number of floors that you can have is actually three. It's just my prototype limitation. Of course, the minimum number of elevators you can have is one. You can probably have zero, but I haven't tried it. Uh, the number of visitors, the minimum number of visitors is one. Uh, the visit time is actually the amount of time the visitor has to spend on each floor when they visit the floor. And this is the number multiplied by these timeouts. Each timeout is like a one unit in the progress of the simulation, and it's expressed in uh, milliseconds. Uh, so this would be like uh, uh, they have to uh, spend at least uh, uh, two units of 200 milliseconds on each floor before they can uh, call the elevator to move on. The number of floors to visit is actually the, the minimum number is number two. The first uh, floor they have to visit, the floor of their choice. Uh, but the second one here has to be uh, the exit um, out of the building on, on the same floor where they enter the building. So the smallest number here can be to. Elevator capacity right now really doesn't matter because we have only one visitor and one elevator. So when you click load scenario, it just does this configuration. Uh, each elevator, I give a label like A, B, C, D, E. If we configure it with like, you know, five elevators, it's it's all populated with, uh, with these letters. Uh, so let's go back to like one elevator. And uh, the number zero uh, next to each of these labels shows how many uh, people are actually uh, riding that specific elevator. Okay, so let's go back to one elevator here and uh, one visitor. And when you start uh, running the scenario, so you click the run button, I I make uh, the visitors enter the building on the ground floor. Uh, this is the parking garage idea, but I really have not been using it. Uh, I'm just using the ground floor and uh, all the floors above. As you can see, the working case where we have the elevator, uh, occasionally it shows like it's opening the doors and gets this visitor uh, to move around. Um, and um, in my prototype implementation once the visitor uh, exits the building on the same floor where they came in I make the visitor come right back in so that's the idea let's just set this to something more realistic let's say we can have like uh, 13 floors we can have like uh, three elevators elevator capacity I don't know seven people we can have maybe try like 20 visitors uh, in the building visit time really doesn't matter we can increase it to like four units uh, to spend on the floor uh, floors to visit I don't know five floors to visit doesn't matter uh, so and let's just drop this uh, time out to smaller uh, to run it a little bit faster. So I'm just going to reload this scenario, see how it gets all repopulated with these new uh, configuration parameters. And I'm going to click run so we can see that these visitors uh, start uh, traveling up and down and the elevators uh, begin to pick up these people and uh, uh, the system randomly generates uh, destinations for the visitors. Uh, and here I just display the occupancy on each floor these are, of course, the floor labels. Like I told you, the parking garage level, I really don't, um, didn't implement. I'm just starting like from the ground floor and up. Um, okay. And so uh, during the simulation, you can update the timeout. The 
smallest timeout that you can have is one millisecond uh, so we can update this timeout and you see it, it's moving much faster uh, it's like you can simulate this uh, unit of time uh, the way you like because it's scalable uh, with this respect uh, so what else so let's slow this down a little bit and um, uh, we can um, in terms of scalability we can we probably have to prove that we can work with larger number of visitors so let's just try maybe like 1000 visitors um, and maybe we can try maybe maybe five elevators in the building and uh, try to reload the scenario as soon as you uh, you can you can stop the scenario like this or you can just uh, uh, reload the scenario with the with the new parameters and uh, let's drop this time limit back to like one milliseconds to run it real fast uh, because we have so many visitors to service uh, and let's just click the the run button and so now we have these uh, visitors waiting on the ground floor, like a long queue of visitors. And you can see that we start distributing them to uh, other levels and we're running it with the specific elevator capacity. Uh, of course, so we can slow this down a little bit just to see more like the patterns of motion of these elevators and you can see how many people are actually riding them uh, the value appears to be next to the elevator label so these five elevators are being real busy uh you know servicing all these floors with uh, with uh, various uh, number of uh, visitors on different floors um all right uh, so then um when you click um by the way in in my mm, debug output uh, view right here i'm showing some uh, uh, traces uh, reported by visitors and elevators as their states change as as we run the simulation and when you click stop okay so i just click stop i'll make this visible again and uh, here uh, as soon as i click stop uh, the system also uh, collects uh, statistics about uh, uh, the elevator movements um, um, right now it's just the elevator movements i'm not uh, really tracking uh, much information about the visitors uh, themselves but here you can see that uh, these are the current uh, labels a7 b6 uh, c7 d7 and e7 right here so the the numbers here really like how many passengers uh, each of the elevators currently has um, and so uh, so this is uh, the number of passengers they have carried since we started uh, the simulation and this is uh, the distance uh, in terms of how many floors these elevators have traveled so this is the type of statistics that i'm showing and of course uh, it would be nice to have a separate use case here uh, to display this type of statistics somewhere else uh, and we can resume uh, the simulation uh, i'll just uh, click run and I'll show you that uh, as we restart the simulation it just keeps running okay uh, so that's uh, the basic uh, demo uh, of the user interface and you can see how uh, the simulation is running and uh, what flexibility I have uh, so far trying to uh, make it prove the concept that we can service visitors with uh, with our elevators okay so let me stop and uh, in my next video i would like to say a few words about the actors um, and use cases we have here in this prototype which i internally call the rise of the elevators for a good reason of course